Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, thanks so much for being here. My name is Misha and I make videos all about sustainability and different practices that I'm implementing into my life and sharing with you so that we can be a little bit kinder to Mother Earth. So this year I actually decided to extend my garden a little bit. So I'm going to show you that whole process from extending my garden all the way to planting it and where it is now. So stay tuned. Okay, so I have three different gardens I'm going to show you today. I will talk about how I mapped out the entire process. I have 55 plants in total that I bought from the farmer's market, and I'll talk all about the cost of the plants as well as the cost of what it took to fence everything in and the cost of what it took to make it look like what it is today. And then lastly, we'll talk about watering and how you can ruin your garden if you allow your husband to come in and film you. So there wasn't a huge variety at the farmer's market, but I did try to pick higher value produce items so that I could get more bang for my buck. Here you'll see that we mowed really low and mapped out the extra 8 feet. I tried to kill the grass with some soil before I cut and measured the weed tarp and then placed stakes into it so it would firmly secure into the ground, as you can see here. You can see here that I'm putting just over three bags of two cubic feet of garden soil and then I will be putting two bags of topsoil on top. Now you can see that I'm using my hand rototill to loosen up the soil a little bit and pull the last extra weeds. I put together a very sophisticated map so I could figure out how I was going to plant the garden, got my measuring tape out, and made my holes. You may notice that our border is a little unfinished. We were looking for some clearance out 4x4s and had no luck the time that we went, so we plan to finish that soon. With my tomato plants and pepper plants, I will be using cages eventually when they get a little bit bigger. I've always been told that you'll want to break up the roots a little bit when you're transferring from the container to its final home in the garden. This fence was quite a challenge and a process, but we decided to get the instructions out and it went a little bit smoother and I'm happy to report that our marriage withstood the entire process. Okay, so here's our side garden. The reason that I have a couple garden spaces over here is because last year and a couple years before I tried to put in squash in my garden and it did not work very well so I actually got squash bugs so I figured if I put it on the other side of the yard that I wouldn't get that but I was wrong and I still got it so now I just have to use this space up a little bit um, so I decided to put a couple grape tomato plants here as well as a couple strawberries and if you come closer Okay, you can actually see I have my first flower here, and I actually just saw I had my first little strawberry here. I heard that the first year or so that you have strawberry plants, you usually don't get too much production, but they are supposed to multiply quite a bit after that, so that's super exciting. So here's the bigger garden that we have here. I'm not a gardening expert, so if you see that my spacing is a little off or see something wrong, definitely let me know in the comments below. But I'm forewarning you that this may not be up to par. So um, we have quite a few different plants in here. We have 45 total of the 55 are in this garden. First I want to mention is that we do have some fencing here. Obviously when the wind blows this might be a problem in the future so we are debating whether we want to take this back or not. Um, it's been already quite an adventure. You saw us put it together but the wind actually we had like this torrential downpour and the wind just blew it all sideways so it may not withstand as much as we want it to so we may be just returning it and getting a more sturdier version so anyways um 
I have a plethora of Roma tomato plants. Um, I choose Roma because my mom actually uses a lot of um, Romas in spaghetti sauce and salsa and that kind of stuff. So almost this whole row actually, starting here all the way back, is Roma tomato plants. So as you can see with this uh, little guy here, he's struggling a little bit, so hopefully he comes back to life. But when the wind blew and this all crashed in, I think a couple plants uh, were sacrificed in that process. So hopefully he comes back to life. But um, I have, I think, 12 um, Roma tomato plants. And then back here we have some bell peppers. So this whole row is bell peppers and then here is bell peppers as well. So um, I have red bell peppers here and then I have six purple bell peppers actually. And then at the very end, I have some yellow bell peppers. And then this last row, I actually tried to put all the seeded, there's gotta be a word for them, but melon type plants back here. But my husband did want some heat. So we actually have one habanero uh, pepper plant here. So we'll see how that turns out this year. Um, but otherwise there is four cucumber plants right here. So these are actually doing pretty well. Those have sprouted quite a bit since we've gotten them. And then these four plants here are actually um, sugar baby watermelon plants. This one is another potentially sacrificed plant, but hopefully that will come back to life too. And then these last three plants are muskmelons. I thought that they were actually cantaloupe, but it says muskmelon on here. I'm not sure what the exact difference is, but nonetheless, these are all looking pretty healthy. So I'm excited about those. My bad. Just oh my get God. out. We're good. I won't move. just stepped on that one too, so just Damn get it. out. <laughs> well, you're out. Uh, where do you want me to go? I won't just move. Get out. I won't move. I won't move. We're good. So, of the plants that are a little bit new this year, um, is the musk melon. I tried sugar babies last year, but we actually had some squirrels or rabbits or something that got into every single melon that I had. So that is why we have some extra fencing this year. So um, we'll find some way to keep them out. I love them, but I do not want them to eat my produce. So um, hopefully those thrive this year. And then the only other new plant in here is the habanero. So everything else should go pretty well. I have a little bit of experience in the other areas. So hoping for a good produce season. Okay, so for my deck garden, um, these are some things that the lettuce bowl here, for example, um, they kind of tell you to put it in a bowl instead of planting it in the garden because it is pretty sensitive. So you want to be able to bring it inside if it's getting too much sun or too much heat um, and that kind of stuff. So this is a salad bowl. It has red sail lettuce. And what's in the middle here is a head of butter lettuce. And I actually got this plant um, in one of my Misfit boxes. I got two and we weren't gonna use both of them. So I just decided to plant one in the middle of there so we could have a little bit of a variety. And then here is a grape tomato plant um, that hopefully will produce quickly. And that's something that we can just, again, throw on salads and just have quickly. And then lastly are a couple herbs here. So I have some basil and I have some mint. Um, I've never had mint before. Um, and it actually surprisingly doesn't smell like mint. Um, so hopefully it'll taste like that, but we'll find some creative ways to use this. And then basil obviously always smells really good and is great for some Italian dishes and other stuff like that. So, okay. so the total cost of everything. So obviously you can see we already had kind of a base, but I decided to go from 12 feet to a 20 foot long by four foot garden. So that extra eight feet of doing extra soil and that kind of stuff um, all together, including the fencing, which we may take back, like I talked about earlier, um, cost just under a hundred dollars, I would say. So the plants by themselves only cost about $16. The soil was about a 20 to $25. And then the fencing was about $35, $40. So startup costs are gonna be a little bit more, but once you already have this set up, like if I didn't extend that extra eight feet, I would have spent less than $50 on plants and everything else. But I wanted to have a little bit more in my garden. And honestly, in the last few years, I have kind of learned from my lesson 
and um, have decided to space my plants out a little bit more so they have a little bit more breathing room and I can get a better product out of them. And that's also why I decided to map it out a little bit so that I can make sure that there was enough spacing between plants and that they would have enough room to breathe. And then just a little tip on watering, I did quite a bit of research last year on trying to make sure that I could keep my plants alive. Um, and they say that the best time to water is very early in the morning so that um, your plants can kind of soak up as much as they can. Um, the second best time is later at night after the sun goes down. The worst time to water is in the middle of the day because, and I've kind of always heard this as well, is you don't want to water, especially on top of your plants in the middle of the day, because if the sun is out, it's going to reflect off the water and it's going to scorch your plants. So obviously you want to try to avoid that as much as possible, but if you can try to water your plants early in the morning. Um, but if you're not an early bird or if you aren't able to get to it in the morning, then just make sure that you do it at night. All right, so that's everything I have for you today. Thanks so much for joining me in my garden tour. If you have any tips or suggestions, like I said down below, please leave me a comment. I will happily accept any and all advice that you can give me as I want to have as much production as I possibly can. Thanks so much for watching and joining me today. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so and leave me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.